Good morning, everyone. I would like to share with you today how to soar because you can. This is a journey about unleashing your full potential. And I will share with you not only a little bit about my life and about the opportunities, but also about the challenges that I had to face and that I had to overcome. And we're talking about six tools that helped me unleash my potential and soar. So as Mike already said, I came to Singapore five years ago as the director of marketing for BMW. Amazing job in an amazing region for an amazing company. Was I not just the luckiest girl on earth? Sitting in my beautiful corporate office, overlooking Sentosa and the big cruise ships coming in, my team from nine different nationalities. Youngest one, 22, oldest one, 64. I mean, that's diversity at its very best. I'm basically having the ride of my life. And this is not just because we do things like organize private VIP events with someone as famous as Prince Harry for our VIP clients. You know what? Just looking at those photos, Prince Harry is not the most important one. Totally overrated. <laughs> totally overrated. The one shot that's really important here is top left. Me in the arms of Nacho Figueras. Nacho Figueras, one of the world's best polo players, the advertising face of Polo Ralph Lauren, and second sexiest man alive. <laughs> I told you it was an amazing job. One day we're sitting in our, we called it the creative corner, talking about an off-road drive event at Mount Bromo. Just imagine that, 20 brand new BMW off-road cars going, driving through an active volcano on Java Island. Wow, and then my phone rings, man. It's my boss. Sonia, we need you for a huge project in Germany. Your time in Singapore is over. You need to move back within the next two months. Bang. And to be honest, it wasn't the first time that that had happened. That moment, I realized I wasn't the puppet master. I was just another highly paid corporate puppet that they moved to wherever they needed me most. And it didn't feel right. There was still so much I wanted to do in Asia. I wanted to create the most amazing experiences for Asian clients. There was so much in my mind and I'm like, I've got all this energy. They, they just can't send me back to Germany now. I wanted to soar. I wanted to unleash my potential. And I knew that if I was to go back to Germany at that point in my life, I couldn't soar. I somehow started to realize, phone still in my hand, I had to leave the corporate world and set up on my own. That moment, I, I, I knew I had to leave BMW. But you know what? <laughs> Leaving the comfort zone is extremely, extremely difficult. Especially when your comfort zone is as comfortable as mine was. And I can tell you it was comfortable. The weeks after I made that decision to leave BMW were total pain and agony. Sleepless nights, doubt, hesitation. I just felt miserable and I questioned myself. Then I thought, well, let's ask my family, let's ask friends. You know what their advice was? Oh, I must be crazy. How can you leave BMW? Well, that didn't help. So what did I do then? I did one thing, I listened to my heart. I closed my eyes and listened to my heart. And I knew deep down what I wanted to do. 
Let me show you another photo. This is a photo I took in Namibia. We were right 10 meters away from that lion. And you can see the lion is strong, he's fierce, he's powerful. What the lion can't do, he can't run. He's got no stamina. But you know what? He doesn't care because the lion does one thing. He focuses on his strengths. And that's something, whatever you want to do in your life, just be aware of where your strengths are. Stop worrying about the thousand things that you're not good at. Focus on the things that you're good at, that you can do, and just work on those. So where was I with my decision to leave BMW? I knew what I wanted. I knew that it was right. And I knew that with my strength set, I could actually do it. But then there was this tiny little bit of doubt that kept creeping up. Just this tiny little bit. And to be honest, it's totally normal. When you face a big decision, it's normal to have doubt. But there's one question that helped me in this situation that has helped me many times since. And it's a very simple question. What's the worst thing that can happen? What's the worst thing that can happen? Whenever in doubt, just ask that question. I had many years of international experience, good education, stable family and friends. I mean, was I going to starve? Seriously? No. And the moment I realized that the worst thing that could happen wasn't actually all that bad, that's when I had the strength and the guts to say, I am going to hand in my resignation. And that moment when I handed in that sheet of paper to my boss and said, I'm out of here. Heaven. <laughs> Heaven. So there I was. I'd handed in my resignation. I was free. And then it was all about taking action and jumping into the cold water. Now, this is a photo of my friend Louis, Louis Pugh. We're at the North Pole. There's icebergs everywhere. It's freezing cold. The water temperature sits at minus 1.7 degrees. We all know that water freezes at plus four. But based on the high salt levels, the water here is actually colder than ice. Unimaginable. Lewis is wearing nothing but his speedos his goggles, and that tiny little cap. And then he does the unthinkable. He jumps in. He jumps into the minus 1.7 degree cold water. That moment is actually extremely, extremely critical because his heart could come to an instant standstill. It, this is a serious ris risk he's taking. And the next thing that happens, all the pain receptors in his body wake up at the same time. And he describes this moment as if a thousand razor blades were cutting right through into his flesh at the same time. That's the moment that I would get out, very clearly. But Lewis, Lewis stays in the water. He lifts his left arm and takes a first stroke, then his right and another stroke. And he swims and swims and swims for an unbelievable 20 minutes. No human had ever done that before. Now the big question here is, why does he do that? Lewis has one mission in life. He wants to save the world's oceans. The UN has officially appointed him as the UN ambassador of the oceans because he's doing such a good job. A few weeks ago, I was having dinner with Lewis and I asked him, Lewis, I mean, how on earth do you do it? How do you do it? And he just looked at me and just said one simple thing. There's nothing more powerful than a made up mind. There's nothing more powerful than a made up mind. And he would know. So how did I take action after leaving BMW? Within four weeks, I walked out of my lawyer's office holding this sheet of paper in my hands, which read, 
Sonnenkind Private Limited Founder Sonja Piontek. Tears were running down my eyes. I had made it. I had registered my very first company. And you know what we do? We basically do what I love doing most, what my skills are for. We create unforgettable experiences for high net worth clients and as well as for corporate clients in the most stunning places on earth. Lobster fishing by helicopter, then we flew to the, to the uh, mountaintop and had a little barbecue. Hong Kong clients. This one, Mongolia with cycle and carriage. We're taking 120 of their clients to Mongolia, Nepal, as well as Korea as part of their anniversary campaign. This photo was only taken yesterday in Pashupatina Temple. I love my new job. And you know what? We get so much positive feedback from the press. And I'm not showing you this to boast. All I want to show you is that if you do something that you're passionate about and that fits your skills, you can't but excel. Another thing happened during that time. During, while I was still with BMW, I regularly got booked as a keynote speaker. I mean, obviously, they wanted the director of marketing BMW on stage. But funny enough, after I left, I still got requests. I couldn't believe it in the beginning. I'm like, hang on, but I'm not the director of marketing anymore. They're like, no, 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 but we want you. So I'm like, wow, you want me on stage. Lovely. And within the last year, I've actually developed an international speaking career. And it's just been such a reward. I mean, that whole last year and a half have just been so powerful and so many things have happened. And it shows you one thing, that behind the comfort zone lies a universe of opportunities. Once you take that one important step, the opportunities are endless. All you've got to do, and that's not always that easy, but I highly recommend this, trust yourself. You are good. Trust yourself and let no, don't let anyone else tell you otherwise. You are good. Do what feels right for you. And if along the way, sometimes things don't go to plan, don't panic. First of all, that's just life. Looking at that photo, I had always dreamt of going to Mongolia. Last year, I finally got the opportunity. I was able to join a motorbike off-road tour through this beautiful, stunning country. Now, Mongolia is a vast country, so I'm riding on my bike doing about 80 kilometers an hour. I see nothing but just rolling hills no houses, no roads, no infrastructure, just the odd herd of wild camels grazing on the side. I mean, I was in heaven. I was just, I couldn't believe how beautiful this country is. So I'm riding and just singing songs and all of a sudden something goes wrong. I know immediately that I'm in deep, deep trouble. I think I must have hit a rock and all of a sudden my front tire just goes bang and I kind of managed to get the handlebar back only to lose it to the right and then it goes bang, 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 bang. And before I can even say a prayer, I fly over the handlebars of my crashing bike. And the moment I land, agony, agony. I know immediately that I've totally done my shoulder, broken some ribs. And it's not a happy moment, I can tell you. The good thing is, we've got a medical doctor on the tour. His name is Christopher. We call him Chris the Doc. Within minutes, he's with me. He administers first aid, gives me all sorts of things. And it is a very, very good feeling to have him there. Once the painkillers kick in and I can breathe again, I realize two things. Number one. I'm not going to ride my bike again. Not that tour. Number two, I've got a decision to make. Either be miserable, get evacuated, fly back home to Singapore, 
be even more miserable, or stay positive, stay in Mongolia, see at least a little bit of the country, and just jump into the medical car. What do you reckon, what did I do? I stayed positive, of course. Whatever the circumstances, I can really advise you, do stay positive, because it does pay off. And I say that so confidently, because I have proof. I stayed in Mongolia, I stayed positive, I jumped into the medical car. And you remember Chris the doc who rescued me? Within one week, we had deeply fallen in love. <laughs> now you know why Nacho Figueras is only the second sexiest man alive. <laughs> Coming back to the six tools of how to unleash your potential, let's quickly recap. Listen to your heart. You yourself know best what's good for you. And then focus on your strengths. Focus on what you're good at. And if you get to a situation where you're a little bit stuck and you don't know how to proceed, just ask yourself that one simple question. What's the worst thing that can happen? And you will notice, in most cases, it ain't all that bad. But then once you decide to take action, be determined. As Lewis says, there's nothing more powerful than a made-up mind. And then trust yourself. You can do this. You can do this. And whatever happens along the way, stay positive. Keep that positive attitude. And if you do these, if you make this part of your unleashing your potential, one thing will happen. You will soar because you can. Thank you.